This conference will now be recorded. So very good morning students. Today we are back with the revision part of J advanced paper on the topic modern physics where we'll be taking up questions from atoms, nuclei, dual nature of matter, semiconductor, etc. So let us uh, start our discussion for today. So this is the first question which is from photoelectric effect. Let us see that. So this question says for a photoelectric effect with incident photon wavelength lambda stopping potential V naught identify then identify the correct variations of V naught which is stopping potential with lambda and with one by lambda. See whenever we see this kind of graph and all and to see the variations with any other parameter let us, let us first of all write down the famous Einstein's equations for photoelectric effect what is that saying the maximum kinetic energy k max that is is equal to the energy of the incident photon minus the work function i take that phi and if we uh, recall the stopping potential must be equal to stopping potential energy must be equal to the maximum kinetic energy that is ev0 and see in place of new we can write c by lambda so if we do that modification to this equation what we get ev0 is equal to hc by lambda minus phi okay if we further so we have to plot in the y-axis v naught so we'll keep keep that alone and then we'll write here hc by e into one over lambda minus w e by phi okay all right See if we plot now this V zero versus lambda, then you know somehow or other you look with lambda it is varying like. See if I just just for the timing if I just ignore the intercept part which is a negative intercept. If we we ignore that part they see the stopping potential and this has this kind of variation so they are inversely proportional and the proportionality constant is ac by e this is a constant okay or the slope so if we plot only v0 versus lambda it is going to be hyperbolic curve it is not a linear curve okay and this is C, the first one is given the hyperbolic curve. You know that P, P, P is equal to RT for ideal gas, right? So if we plot P, so P is inversely proportional to V. So if we plot P and V, we get this kind of curve, right? So similar to this, similar to this PV curve, we'll get a hyperbolic curve and with, okay, so with lambda. But if we plot in the x axis 1 by lambda, if we plot 1 by lambda in the x axis, then we must be getting, we must be getting a straight line. We must be getting a straight line with positive slope, positive slope, not negative slope. You look here, this is a positive slope. So we'll get a straight line with a positive slope okay and this is having positive slope with a straight line this is having negative slope with straight line okay so a and c will be the correct answer for this question so this was question from j advanced 2015 now we'll move on to the next problem 
so this is also j advanced 2015 problem so an electron is electron in an excited state of lithium so we know lithium has actually three electrons and when we excite it to two plus state two plus state that means it acts as acts as hydrogen like atom so this becomes an hydrogen like atom that means we can use the Bohr's theory upon it okay so hydrogen like atom H like atom we can use Bohr's theory or we can apply <clears throat> because both postulates and etc uh, for calculating energy and all those things we can use only hydrogen like we can use the Bohr's theory for calculating energy etc only for hydrogen atom so hydrogen atom has only one electron in the outer orbit okay or hydrogen like atom which has like hydrogen like atom means any ions can be hydrogen like atom like lithium if i take helium helium plus one ion okay plus one or one plus okay one plus ion can behave as hydrogen like atom so for this kind of atom so look this kind of atom the energy expression will be actually c minus 13 one six by n square it will be actually z by n square so here there will be z okay z by uh, n by z whole square i think there will be z square here okay z square in place of n we have to write n by z whole square okay that that's how we'll get the energy anyway so <clears throat> Similarly, for ready, ready etc., uh, there will be a change. So, Bohr orbit. Generally, we get any arbitrary orbit for hydrogen atom. Bohr orbit is this a n square. But in case of hydrogen like atom, we will have to write. We have to write a zero. This is Bohr radius n square by z this will be the radius of hydrogen like atom okay these are the things we need to remember so let us see an electron in an excited state of lithium two plus ion has angular momentum t is by two pi the de broglie wavelength of the electron is in this state is pi so de broglie wavelength is given so p pi is zero where a zero is the Bohr radius and the value of p will be how much you have to find out that so the question is say for hydrogen like atom we know both postulate can be applied so here it is given that uh, lithium 2 plus excited state has angular momentum we know a l angular momentum can be written as n h by 2 pi n h by 2 pi in general ln is equal to so that is here given given as 3 h by 2 pi so if we just compare we will get the value of n to be 3 that means the lithium ion 2 plus ion is in its second excited state second excited state okay so second excited state n is equal to 3 we have got now see we know d probably wavelength lambda d i am writing here lambda d will be h by p p means what h by m v so if we multiply r m v r so here in this particular in this particular orbit what is the value of r sorry mvr means l so this is a h into r by l l3 here ln means n is the 
uh, or p so here it is in the or third a second excited state so l3 it is given as c h r divided by r is the radius of that particular orbit and this is given as h by 2 pi so 3h by 2 pi then we can just strike this out so 2 pi r by 3 so this will be this will be the de broglie wavelength so de broglie wavelength we have got as lambda d is equal to 2 pi r by 3 once we get that what else we can do we have to find out the value of p so we can just compare with this so 2 pi by 3 r so this r also we have to write r is actually a 0 n square by z so what is this for the lithium 2 plus ion a 0 let it be like this n is 3 so it is 9 by z is 3 okay so let us let us write it here in place of r we will write that means it is actually 3 a 0 so 3 a 0 2 pi into 3 2 pi by 3 into a 0 and it is here p pi a 0 so pi goes of 3 3 a 0 a 0 so we get p is equal to 2 so this is the value so value of p is 2 okay i hope you guys understood this so we have to always see uh, for this kind of problem we have to find out the number of orbit like which energy state it is in then we have to write the diproglio wavelength and compare it and at the same time you have to remember the formula of the radius okay radius of that particular orbit in terms of bore radius okay so then only we will be able to solve this problem all right so we'll go to the next problem okay so this is again a nice problem so for a radioactive material for a radioactive material for a radioactive material its activity its activity a and the rate of change of its activity r are defined as so c activity is a which is defined as dn by dt okay and the rate of change of activity is defined as minus da by dt so these things are given where n of t is the number of this is i think t okay is the number of nuclei at any time t so n of t is the number of nuclei at any time t how we write this we write as n0 to the power minus lambda into t this is how we write isn't it okay so two radioactive sources one is p another one is q then mean lifetimes are given this is tau and this is 2 tau have the same activity at t is equal to 0 they have same activity at t is equal to 0 the rate of change of activity rate of change of activity is rp at t is equal to 2 2 tau are rp and rq respectively then you have to uh, see the ratio rp by rq is given as n by e then what is the value of n so it is a very nice question i think this is uh, yeah this is the 15th question 2015 j advanced now I'll just explain you the questions once again. The question is that radioactive material of activity A and rate of change of activity, its activity R, is given as A is equal to minus dn by dt, R is equal to minus dA by dt, where n of t is 
the number of nuclei at any time t there are two radioactive sources which has like one of them is p another one is q p has mean lifetime tau and q has mean lifetime 2 tau have the same activity initially when t is equal to zero their rate of change of activity is that means rp and rq at t is equal to 2 tau are given rp and rq their their ratio rp by rq is n by e so you have to find out what is the value of n so look here it is very simple so if we write a a is what a is dn by dt that means you know ddt of so here minus is there already so ddt of n0 to the power minus lambda t okay so what we get here so we get n0 lambda e to the power minus lambda t okay so this is what we get okay okay so if we require any time we can use this thing okay so this i can write as n0 sorry a0 a0 e to the power minus lambda t okay this is the activity okay this is how activity is written now look rate of change of activity see r is equal to minus da by dt okay minus da by dt means what minus da by dt see we have found out what already what is a we can write it ddt of a0 to the power minus lambda t so this will give you again a0 lambda okay what it will give a0 into lambda e to the power minus lambda t i hope you agree with me just simple derivative with respect to time okay so this is let us say this is equation number one now 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 what is given see what we know actually rp and rq let us write what is rp if we write rp what we can write we can write this r0 and in place of sorry a0 in place of lambda we can write lambda p e to the power minus lambda p into t this is what is rp another one is rq this rq also can be written as a0 lambda q e to the power minus lambda q into t this is how we can write this too and then say if i take the ratio rp i think there is yes rp by rq ratio we have to write so this is a0 lambda p e to the power minus lambda p into t divided by a0 lambda q e to the power minus lambda q into t okay so now see this lambda we know lambda is equal to lambda is equal to how much 1 by tau okay so because mean lifetime is like this so mean lifetime tau is equal to 1 by lambda so this is how it is defined so we can just replace the lambda p with, with tau so in case of in case of p in case of p see lambda p is equal to only tau 
and lambda q is 1 over 2 tau this is what we will write here okay so lambda p will be 1 over tau it is power minus p by tau here a0 1 over 2 tau it is power minus p by 2 tau this a0 a0 we can strike them out okay then let this okay let us clean this first okay so you know this tau tau also will get cancelled so 2 is there right so 2 and this is it will be power minus t by tau and this will be plus it will be power t by 2 tau that means it will be 2 into e to the power minus of t by this okay e to the power let me check once again oh t is 2 t 2 tau the time is given as t is here 2 tau so we'll write the time 2 tau so e to the power minus t is 2 tau and it is also 2 tau so it is 2 by e right so in the question what was given or p by r q was given as n by e so what is the value of n here n is 2 so this implies n is 2 so this is the answer what is the value of n n is 2 okay we'll move on to the next problem okay this is now an interesting problem so what is this problem saying this is what is this related to first of all so this is related to Uh, so, so this is a problem from nuclear reaction, fission reaction. So fission reaction is given as this, as you see here. I I may write it here. So the fission reaction says this is U two thirty six uranium two thirty six ninety two. It breaks into two nuclear xenon and strontium strontium 94 and 38 and there will be two more particles x and y okay considering uranium 23692 to be at rest the kinetic energies of the product denoted by kxc for xenon ksr for the strontium and kx the nucleus unknown nucleus sorry unknown uh, yeah so unknown nucleus of x has kinetic energy 2 mega electron volt and ky kinetic energy of nuclei y has kinetic energy the same kinetic energy 2 million electron volt or mega electron volt respectively the binding energies of the nucleon of this uranium and xenon strontium 
be this. So this is actually binding energy per nucleon. Okay. For uranium is 7.5 MeV. Then xenon is 8.5 MeV. Strontium 8.5 MeV respectively. Considering different conservation laws, the correct option is or are this. So X and Y will be, see first option says X will be N, Y will be N. N means neutron, okay? X and Y both will be neutron. And kinetic energy, kinetic energy of <coughs> strontium and xenon, strontium is 1, 2, 29 MeV and Xenon 86 MeV. Option B says X be the P proton and Y be the electron. And Xenon and Tronsium has the same kind of energy, same energy as Tronsium 129 MeV. Xenon has 86 MeV. Then option C says it is proton and neutron. And energies are as given in the above options. And the D says both the particles are neutron with kinetic energy interchange. Like see, strontium has kinetic energy 86 MeV and xenon has 129 MeV. So now you have to find out which option is correct. So, what are the conservation laws we can use here? See, first of all, linear momentum conservation. Linear momentum conservation. Then you can, first of all, you can just go with charge conservation. Charge conservation, where the charge is conserved conservation then <clears throat> then the energy conservation energy conservation okay so these are the things you have to at least you can consider see if we go with charge conservation let us see what should be the charges of x and y See here the total charge is how much? That uh, to, uh, 92. And in the product already we have 92, right? This is a side. So this is 38 plus 54. This is nothing but 92. Right? This is 92. So this X and Y particle must be neutral or like they can be both neutral particle or their charges will be such that in uh, like if we add the charges both will make the total charge to be zero that means that means see either uh, x can be x and y both can be neutron or one can be proton and another can be electron so that like addition of charges will give you zero for x and y so these are the possibilities with the charge conservation so with the charge conservation we can see the total charge of x and y must be zero and in each case you look uh, if you see this there are two neutrons so this can be see from charge conservation we can we, we can just say this can be a possibility so this there see in the option b there are proton and electron so we cannot distinguish these two we have to further go with kinetic energy etc and then look this option c this is by like a single site or by if like at a glance we can ignore this option thinking this is wrong because total charge a proton and neutron cannot be zero, right? It is giving some additional charge, which is not possible. 
so option c we cannot think at all about this option c now we will go with momentum conservation okay momentum conservation look this kinetic energy of these two guys see this x and y they have the same kinetic energy okay they have the same kinetic energy right and initially initially this guy this guy uh, like uranium was uranium was rate rest at rest that means momentum so linear momentum of xenon plus strontium plus this x plus y this will be zero by the law of conservation of linear momentum total momentum must be zero so that is another clue we can get okay let us see first of all whether the the kinetic energy of strontium is 86 mv or xenon has uh, 129 mv that that part let us first resolve so how to resolve that part first of all let us see what is the change in change in the binding energy because look here the binding energy is, okay i'll just clean everything so the binding energy of uranium is given and obviously binding energy of uranium per nucleon is less than the other two that's why it is going to be like the most stable okay in this situation so anyway so the change in the kinetic energy sorry change in the binding energy change in the binding energy will be manifested as the kinetic energy of all the product nuclei okay the change in the binding energy will be manifested as the kinetic energy of the product nuclei so where the kinetic energy of the x and y are given the kinetic energies of xenon and strontium we don't know we have to calculate those okay so look so binding energy change in the binding energy change in binding energy be will be see how many nucleons are there for the uranium that is 236 so we have to multiply first of all we need to find okay so binding energy of xenon xenon has 140 into 8.5 mev plus strontium has 94 into 8.5 minus 236 into 7.5 so if you do this calculation if you do this calculation you'll get 219 to be the total kinetic energy so this will be the change in the change in binding energy now change in binding energy this is mev change in binding energy will be manifested in as the kinetic energy so we know the kinetic energy of two products x and y so the kinetic energy of xe plus kinetic energy of sr must be 219 minus 4 this is in mev which is 215 mev now look 215 see if we if we add 1 to 9 with 86 so this will give you that so this is total energy you can see that okay now you have to now see 
is xenon and strontium among these two particles the strontium is the lighter one so the total energy has to be 215 mev for xenon plus strontium okay kinetic energy of strontium so this much now we have seen there are options either it has to be 192 uh, for xenon or strontium or strontium and there is another option kinetic energy of xenon or kinetic energy of sr to be 86 so now look the strontium has mass how much it has mass 94 mass number and this is strontium mass number and xenon has xenon has mass number 140 so this is a lighter element or lighter nucleus and you know lighter nucleus lighter nucleus will move faster okay will move faster so kinetic energy of strontium will be greater than kinetic energy of xenon that means you know the kinetic energy of xenon will be 86 mv and that of strontium will be the other one that is one sorry uh, yes 129 mv okay so 129 mv all right so this is how we can see char with charge neutrality we can consider either see now we have now we have options c anyway c we had already dropped and d now we are dropping because kinetic energy of strontium will be more okay so cd we have already dropped now among these two among these two which one will be the correct one we have to choose now okay we have to choose so cd we can ignore now we have to see now we have to see among these two like x so this can be neutron neutron or it can be proton neutron and kinetic energy is the same so now how to distinguish from here so if this x and y are proton and electron then what is the difficulty since the number of electron and proton before the reaction and after the reaction should be the same number of proton and number of electron to to just maintain the charge neutrality x and uh like both should be like electron number of electron and number of proton after reaction and before reaction must be the same so if x is proton and y is electron then see we have already we have in this reaction already we have number of protons and number of neutron we can just find out see what is the number of proton number of proton is 92 so we have got number of proton 92 already okay but again if we have this as proton so the, then the total number of proton will be 93 okay even though charge neutrality is there but number of proton and number of new uh, number of electron separately has to be <coughs> conserved the number of electron and number of proton has to be individually conserved or separately conserved so if this x and y 
like x is proton and y is electron then the conservation of number of proton and conservation of number of electron is not satisfied so that's why proton and a proton and electron we cannot take that so therefore the option a will be the correct answer for this question okay so we have now uh, yes so we have now one last more question see this question says an accident in a nuclear laboratory resulted in deposition of a certain amount of radioactive material of half life 18 inside the laboratory so this happens generally in, in nuclear laboratories and all due to the radiation there will be a lot of havoc uh, a lot of accidents there is a permissible radiation there is a permissible radiation if the radiation of any particular radioactive substance is more than that permissible value then there could be accident so generally when we are in the nuclear nuclear laboratory then there will be a, a small machine which will be given to each and every uh, workers or every individual each and every uh, scientist or any workers to take just like a batch to see the count count okay per second or so there is a counter radiative element how many are penetrating our body that will be counted if this value goes beyond the permissible value then it can uh, cause harm to our body okay so that is the thing so here question is an accident in a nuclear laboratory resulted in deposition of a certain amount of radioactive material of half life 18 days inside a laboratory test revealed that radi radiation was 64 times more than the permissible permissible value okay permissible radiation limit okay permissible radiation limit for safe operation of the laboratory so wh what does this mean so suppose the permi permissible value is n or so this is uh, how do we write that we can write this this as see rate of decay rate of decay radiation means rate of decay of the nucleus okay so that you can write as r so if r0 is the permissible value then this r of t at any time can be written as 64 times of r0 this is the permissible value permissible Uh, radiation okay all right so now r0 if the limit of limit is r0 now it is 16 times of r0 more than the permissible value as i said now what is the minimum days after which laboratory can be considered safe for the use 
okay after how many days the laboratory will be considered to be safe to use so to see that what you have to do see we can find out r by r0 r by r0 is 64 right so generally r is written as r0 into e to the power minus lambda t kind of that okay so we can actually write this as and this is actually half lifetime lambda is written as 0.693 divided by t half so this is how lambda is written and if we take the mod of this and see we if we take logarithm of both side okay logarithm of both sides so if we make it 10 base so 2.303 logarithm of this is actually if we take the magnitude, this will be lambda t. Okay, lambda t. So this can be further written as 0.693 by t half half life. So I can write it here. So from here I'm writing, okay. This is r by r zero, so this will minus lambda t. So I'm just ignoring the minus. Okay, so 0.693 divided by 18. 18 is the half life into t. Okay, so this part will give you so 10 best log 84. Sorry, 64 will give you. So this is into 1.806 into 18 divided by 0 0.693 is the t. Now look this. Uh, If we solve this, we'll get actually this T will be how much? We just we can simplify, just strike this out. Okay, maybe we can just so three, two, three, 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 one, and this is six now you can okay so approximately how long it will be you have to just do the calculation part and simplify this value this thing then you must be able to get t is equal to 108, nearly equal to 108 days. Okay. 108 days. After that, it will be safe to use. Okay. All right, so this is the answer. So 108, this will be the answer here. So I think this is 2016 problem paper, 2016, not 15. I think that will be previous one also will be 2016, 2016. 
advance they advance 2016 the previous one also was there okay so with this we will stop it here for today we'll take up more questions from the je papers advanced paper in the next classes so thank you for your patience bye for today